Hello, my name is Gary Simon of designcourse.com and today is January 15th with our 15th video of the year and today we're going to continue on with the, from the previous lesson from yesterday with creating the game layout interface in Adobe Photoshop CC. Alright, so as always visit designcourse.com and put in your email uh, to get notified of future released courses and also the project files for today are available for free in the description below this video. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so I uh, first just to preface this, I'm going to have to speed through this as fast as possible. Right now it's 7.54 p.m. Eastern Time, and that means I have very little time to get this done. Plus, I have the wife wanting to get a shower and our toddlers, you know, they're just going crazy because they're tired. But I told them, listen, I have to do this. This is a video every day of the year. I got to get it done. I can't miss a day. So I'm going to be going quick through this, unfortunately. But you know what? You'll just have to pause and uh, move along as I do if you want to follow along exactly. That is life. So I... Uh, I'm going to make some adjustments to this, uh, and this is something that happens routinely in the course of designing a website throughout several days. You may look at something and say, you know what, I want to change this, uh, or you may have a better idea. So that was the case for me today. So uh, what I want to do off the bat is kind of just take this layer one, right, or the rectangle one, which is the container for this layer mask right here for this building, and hit Control T, hold Shift, just scale down. Well, you don't even have to hold Shift, really. But we're going to uh, shift it all the way down, and of course there's a helicopter outside, so it's probably really loud, but oh well. Uh, just to the bottom of that image, yeah, you know what, we're going to go further. Maybe around there, and we're going to also take Auto Select Layer, make sure that's selected with the Move Tool, and move this down a bit. We want this to go down a decent amount. All right, so then uh, now what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to take up, uh, pull up this website. This is linked in the description of this video in the bottom here of YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not, make sure you are, and that way you can get to this link. Uh, and these are blood spatter brushes, and they're free. And if you just go to Google and type this in, you'll get a ton of you know free blood spatter brushes for Photoshop or whatever. You'll see there's a lot to choose from. So it's not really important which you choose from, just so you, just so you get some that work and just download it. And then if you have a later version of Adobe Photoshop, you just double click on your extracted uh, brush file and it will lo load automatically into Photoshop. So to access that, all we have to do is take our brush and we can uh, click the down arrow here and we'll see all of these brushes that are added and there's a ton of them by default Photoshop has you know these brushes right here I uh, and then anything that you load externally is just loaded beneath that so these are blood spatter brushes right here before I get to that I want to move some things around so I want to move the skull down a bit so if I just select on this right side it gives a skull right, we'll hold control, select uh, these two layers here, and then also the circles and wire as well. And we'll just move these down right around here. And then if we just click over here to select these uh, ellipses, and then select those three, deselect auto select layer, that way you can click anywhere without it selecting it, and then just hold shift and bring it down. I'd say right to around there. All right. So, now, just above layer one that I have labeled, hit Control Shift N to bring up a new layer. Hit OK or Enter, and now we want to get our blood spatter brush. Okay, so I'm just going to choose one of these. I, I want to choose one that will work well. I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose, so we'll just have to see how we choose it. And these are large, 1250px. So if we go over here, this is a real large brush. So I'm going to scale down. I'm going to just put in 800 by default hit enter and then choose and just click right there make sure you have a red color all right so that kind of looks cool um you know what i'm going to undo that let me go back and try to find something else obviously you can see i have quite a bit here i'll try that that's 1250 as well so i'm just going to put 800 now what I want to do is go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. And then take the Move Tool, 
maybe go like right around there. Okay, that's cool. All right. So now what I want to do is we're going to move this stuff around just a tad bit over here. So I'm going to take the move tool with uh, auto select layer applied. We're going to take play Skull Wars now. We're also going to take and hold shift uh, that layer and then hold control and select those two layers. And we'll drag all those down right around there. And then I want to take the bottom layer. And this is the one that's actually orange. And I'm going to change the color to a red. Right around there will work. So that's C C O E O E. Hit OK. And the black uh, text is not enough contrast. I'm going to actually want to make it white. So I'm going to select our all our action layer, right click, copy layer style, and then click back to it, right click, paste layer style. And I'm going to zoom up just so we can get to 100% here. And then I'm going to take uh, just underneath this layer right here. I'm going to select this layer. Hit Control Shift N for a new layer. Take our brush again, and we're going to choose a different brush. So I want some blood to kind of just show around the button here. Now you don't want to use the same one to look a little bit too repetitive. So that's not the same one. Okay, cool. All right. Now, oops. Now I'm going to zoom out here. That looks good. Now I'm going to take our text up here. Oops. Take these two, take them down, and I'm going to add some more text to this portion. So I'm just going to zoom up. So it'll be, be, it'll be like three more lines. So I. Uh, Rip apart your enemies solely through decapitation. And yes, I'm, I'm messed up, so I came up with this silly uh, description here of this game. With only your hands, no weapons allowed. And then I'm going to take this right here, I'm going to bold that, and okay. Right click, we'll zoom out. All right, so far, so good. Uh, now what I wanna do just beneath here, um, first I'm gonna select on the background layer. We're gonna make this all black. And then just fill that in with the paint bucket tool. And I'm gonna take the eraser. All right, so we're at 332 for the size. We wanna select the building image and And just kind of get rid of and fade that off. Okay. Same thing over here because we dropped that image down a little bit. All right. And then down here, I, I'm just going to have a, a three different video thumbnails that a person could click on just to view content of the actual game. So obviously for a game, the first thing a person who would be interested in want to see is actual gameplay footage. So we're going to bring up our grid. And since we're going to have three of these, we want these to span the width of four columns because this is a 12 grid, uh, 12 column grid. So we'll go ahead and take our rectangle tool and hold uh, Alt just to scale out just to around here. Hit Control H twice to get rid of everything and get rid of the grid. I'll drop this beneath there or maybe at the top. And can't really see it, so we could change the color slightly. And now what I want to do is, obviously, in the context of actually developing this website or designing it for a real game, they would provide you with screenshots. So you would have that, but we don't. So what I'm going to do is open up the project file the, of this warehouse from the previous lesson. So assuming you've watched that first lesson, go ahead and open up the warehouse image uh, from the, the project file. So I've gone ahead and done that. So hit Control A, Control C, close that out. And with these, this uh, rectangle selected, hit con, uh, Control Shift and N. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. Hit OK, Control V to paste, Control T to transform this or scale it down. 
and hit shift and alt and just scale this thing down a lot maybe around here so this would be one image of the game and then we will create a real quick play icon on top of this. So somewhere in the center with the ellipse tool selected, we'll hold shift, scale up. Center it with your arrow keys if you need to. And then the actual play arrow. I'm just going to real quick try to eyeball this. <laughs> and that's not right. So we can use our arrow keys. And we will change the color by double clicking over here on the layer and changing that to white. And that's obviously incorrect. So we can take the direct selection tool and adjust this as needed. All right, that looks pretty decent. Now we can take the bottom layer right here, the black circle, take the opacity down just a little bit, just around 63. And we can give these names if we wanted to. So I can go ahead and take both of those layers and these, basically all four of these layers, drop it down just a little bit. We could take this all our action text will duplicate that just so we have the um, the layer star already applied. Control T, scale that down. We can give each one of these its own sort of caption. And I'll call this one, um, I don't know, catacombs action, you know, whatever. And change this to, let's try 20. We'll move that into place right around there get rid of that get our grid back and we want to um, well before we get the grid let's take all these layers so we got the text layer we got this layer which is the actual image then we got the layer beneath that acts as a clipping mask and hit control G and we'll group those and we'll call this video alright so now we'll get the grid out right click video duplicate the group I'm sorry I have to go so fast, but <laughs> I got a warning from my wife. I'm such a uh, pansy. All right. And then duplicate it one more time over here and get that lined up correctly. And there we go. Okay. So if you wanted to make this look different, you know, for whatever purpose, this isn't real, obviously. Maybe I'll move this up and down, move this one over here. Okay. Now they actually look somewhat different for the thumbnails. And that is basically it. I'm going to stop there. Of course, you can have different things down here or maybe a little bit more. But, you know, I looked at a couple of different current games like Battlefield 4, their website. They, they keep the landing pages that sell the game pretty minimal. Uh, and they let the content and the videos do the speaking for themselves. So I, I'm going to end it there. And so hopefully I can be excused <laughs> about how quickly I rushed this. I wanted to get the video done. Uh, so, yeah, uh, tomorrow we're going to tackle something quite different. Uh, I know this is only our 15th video. Today's January 15th. I, uh, But I'm going to tackle something different. We're going to work with a little bit of an introductory to photo manipulation. And so I got that project done and it looks really cool. So hopefully, you know, if you're a front end guy or you're only interested in, in website design or front end or you're only interested in visual identity, uh, hopefully you just keep your mind open and you try to learn something new. Um, and so that's what tomorrow will be. All right, so I, I'm Gary Simon. Check out designcourse.com. And also, as always, I, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet. And also check out the social media profiles that are linked in the description as well. All right, I will see you tomorrow.